And we got a bag of silicone lubricant. That was awful nice to include that, cause like I said before, this wasn't cheap. So at least they gave us some lube. <laughs> Cause Ranch, we are back on the Defender. And today we are gonna figure out what is needed to get this 430 horsepower, 6.2 liter, brand new GM Performance crate engine fired up. That was a mouthful. The big obvious thing needed is this guy right here put on that guy right there. But we have a few other things that need to happen as well. So let's see if we can figure out this mess. Before we get started, we're gonna make a little room, pull the cheap LR4 out. Good thing it runs now. Before I forget, I wasn't able to show you guys in the video that we built the hitch for the silver LR4, but Merlin here previously did have the cheaper version of the bolt-on hitch that I said was prone to failure if you towed too heavy of a load. This one was obviously upgraded to the frame-mounted hitch because, as you see there, that's what happens. It just rips them ears right off. It did that on both sides. So there, just wanted to show you since I did now have an example of that here. We've had a few in the past do that as well. Good thing I'm not out of yard yet. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do today is get this octopus mess of an engine harness set in there and plugged in. There's a lot going on here. It's almost comical how big that is. Defender 90 for reference. But building something like this guy, essentially starting from scratch, is kind of an interesting deal. Everyone who does it is gonna do it in their own different way, but essentially, you're knocking dominoes over and getting things to fall into place and you have to do certain things before you can do other things. We need to lay this out before we can lay this out, which that one is the transmission harness. And for us to get the engine harness in place in the easiest fashion, we took the front end back off that we fit earlier in the series. But before we can fire this up, at some point we're gonna have to put the front end back on because we'll have to build an intake. And we also want the radiator in place so we don't fire it up dry without cooling in it. And the radiator also holds our transmission cooler. So we'll have to have that hooked back up. Then the most comical part about all of that is we get fired up, everything fit up, anything on the chassis modified. We gotta blow the whole thing back apart engine out strip down to just the chassis because we're gonna paint the chassis but i don't want to paint the chassis until we're sure we don't have to modify anything it's definitely not what it came with from the factory all right having this spread out on the floor kind of gives us an idea of where we got to go with everything it is labeled odd and even odd is on the left hand side driver's side so we'll flip it around like this this stuff goes up to the front of the engine this goes on the even side so that gives us a good start we got our ob2 port here that's something this thing has never had before and then we got a few that are heat wrapped so imagine those go near the exhaust we'll figure out where we want to stick the fuse panel and the ecu is probably going to go inside the cab Nice thing about having a nice full connect and cruise kit from GM Performance is everything is labeled. You have instructions if you need to reference them. We aren't gonna use them for this part yet because I can read and plug into the things that it says it is. Like this is an O2 sensor. So that's gonna go back there. Engine coolant temperature, cam sensor. So we're gonna get just start feeding these guys through. All right, like I mentioned earlier, this is the odd cylinders, even cylinders. So this is one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. Harness is odd and even. So we got those matched up with the throttle body. And on the harness, we got this long guy, way long. And that one is the generator or alternator. You know, we kind of made our own front drive setup. So the alternator is actually on this side, but there is enough length that we can sneak this through, keep it nice and clean and run it over. And luckily enough, we can plug that guy in and the alternator we picked for this plugs right in. 
There's a good chance when this is all said and done, we will shorten this guy up because that's too much. Clip. The shorter one here is our coolant temp sensor, which is right here. So that will go and be tucked right down along there. This long one that almost reaches you guys is mass airflow, so that'll get set aside. That'll be in this area. Cam sensor, so we can route that guy down. As we keep working our way, getting the harness situated, we're going to continually modify how it sits. I want this to look clean, but I'm not going for a hidden wire harness. I just want it to look nice and factory and then still be serviceable and not change a bunch of things. All right, so on the back here, we have these metal brackets that look like they will attach nicely to the back of the cylinder heads, maybe. This round one goes here. That is our oil pressure sensor. That's a good thing to know. So the fuel filter, is somewhat in the way, shocker. Order of operations, set that aside. All right, so let's figure out what we got going here. These all go inside. Speed sensor, so that'll go out back. Odd side knock sensor, so that's gonna be down. O2 sensor, so that'll go out back. Oh, that guy's gonna reach. We got the odd cylinder knock sensor harness, which is wrapped in heat tape because it goes behind the exhaust manifold. But that one almost seems tight. Everything else on this has been a tad on the loose side. Got enough to plug. That's why we're just quickly routing everything. And once we get everything situated, we can make sure it's sitting happily because there's a good chance I have something not quite routed exactly how it was designed. Let's see how it fits on the even side. So the ones that go on the side of the block for the even side are a tad on the tight end as well. So I'm guessing I need to move this whole section of harness down. So I went ahead and flipped that main harness underneath the fuel filter and it sits down at the bottom side of the valley and everything sits at least 300 times better than it did before and we got a visitor back keeping an eye on everything we came across our first issue this says map sensor this is the map sensor no pluggy doesn't work this way either if you look at the setup on the plug and inside the connector, it's not correct. Not quite sure on that one. So, I'm gonna write down that part number and figure out what connector it's supposed to have and see what we gotta do there. We may have to switch this one out. One would think it would work because this was an entire kit directly from GM. This is a Chevy motor. That's, that's from GM. So I would have assumed they would have known what it needed. Been wrong before though. But this is roughly how the harness will sit on top of the engine. We'll secure these guys down. Everything's nice and relaxed. This will more than likely get the plastic covers if I can find something that doesn't say Corvette. I just don't want it to say Corvette on top. Maybe we can make some that say Land Rover. Here are the harnesses we stuffed on the back side of the engine underneath. We got plenty of length for our O2 sensors. And those are gonna go ahead of our high flow cats. And then we got our vehicle speed sensor, which I'm not exactly sure where that's at. We do have our engine oil level sensor right there. And that guy does not have a connector on the harness. I'll have to see what it takes to add that because that would be a convenient feature to have. This thing was not exactly cheap, so if we can keep it together, that would be ideal. And you'll see the LT230 transfer case right there. That little beige plug. And that goes to the transmission sub harness right there. So this side into the transmission, this side into the connector by our fuse box. Which, speaking of the fuse box, that piece looks an awful lot like an OEM one. No idea why that is. And off that fuse box, we have our cooling fan power and our fuel pump power. So that's nice. Those will be switched on by the ECU. All right, so we just need to figure out what to do with this and get a list of other things we need to accomplish before cranking this thing over. But before that, 
And because I'm a child, we're gonna take a short intermission and modify the ruckus. The little rock is looking pretty bare. So what are we doing here? Most of this stuff is gonna end up in here. Well, not actually, um, I'm gonna keep all the stock parts, but we are going to modify the exhaust, the intake, along with rejetting the carb. This little Honda Ruckus is a blast, but I live on a hill and it'll only do 20 miles an hour by the time I'm at the top of the hill. So we need a little more go juice. So hopefully intake and exhaust will wake it up some. And while we're at it, I'd like to change the seating position Position, which then in turn requires a handlebar change to make all this comfortable again. All right, so being we are adding, I guess I should say, hopefully adding some more air into the little 50cc engine. I wanna bump the jet size on the carburetor as well. This one is a 75, which means nothing to me, just a number. We're gonna go to 80, if I can find that. We got an 82, 80. Make sure these look the same, good deal. And we'll install that guy. And that's just got a bigger orifice, I guess you wanna say, a bigger hole in it. So it should let more fuel. Therefore, straighten it out the mixture again. And with that on there, we can now figure out where we want our filter and make the tube to match. We'll cut this something like that, leave enough straight so we have a good clamping surface. We're on there. So we welded our little adapter onto the exhaust pipe. We're gonna toss a coat of high temp paint on that guy before we mount it up. I think something like that will work nicely. So we also have a couple breathers to add in. Got this chunk of half inch aluminum rod, got the lathe. All right, so I got enough random stuff wedged together to hold the bracket into place. Also have our little nipples slash bungs made up and the holes drilled for those. That worked. She just can't get enough of the sun. We have our intake to pretty much all knocked out. I went ahead and marked out how much we're cutting off the seat bracket. So that'll go away. This'll get cut off, moved up there. Finally decided to have some water. There is our sweet cone filter intake. I feel like such a ricer modifying my Honda. But we also have the muffler on there as well. I have our seat bracket all painted up here. I just need to throw a coat of paint on the handlebars. Then it is time to test this guy out so I can quit messing around with stuff that doesn't matter and get back onto the Defender. So there is the finished product. We got some drag bars, lower seat, that sweet cone filter, aluminum intake, 
turned out pretty swell. And the little pipe makes a little more racket. Or should we say ruckus? All right, now that we're done being a child, let's take a peek at this stuff here. These two are the paperwork that came with the engine itself. We got our specs, 376 cubic inches. Our connecting rods are powdered metal. That actually doesn't sound all that great. Red line is 6,600 RPMs. We need 92 octane, that's kind of hard. We mainly only have 91 around here. It's actually kind of cool to get that spec sheet. Nodular iron. Gives you the break-in procedure and whatnot, so. We're also supposed to inspect thoroughly before signing for delivery. A little late for that. And we got a bag of silicone lubricant. That was awful nice to include that, cause like I said before, this wasn't cheap. So at least they gave us some lube. And these bits here. That looks like that's for some tuning. Plugs into the OBD2 port, USB on the other side. Not exactly sure what that connector's for. Plugs in to something and then also to something over here. This is pretty sweet though. Actually kind of excited about that. That is an aluminum badge that says Chevrolet Performance. I'll have to figure out where to go with that. And then we got a flash drive. This must include all the nuclear launch codes. So today was mainly a fact-finding mission on what we need to do to get this guy running. And our line of dominoes falling. This is somewhere two or three hits away. Getting ready to order another round of parts, some steering bits, so this is less awkward to move around. Should have did that months ago. So we're gonna make a list and I wanted to see what we needed to order to get this thing fired up. We're actually pretty close on that end of things. So we have our wiring harness, so we are good there. With the exception of, we need to figure out map sensor connector. That kind of sucks, that doesn't work. And the other thing we need to do is figure out which O2 sensors the kit is calling for, get those ordered, along with couple bungs. Outside of those two things, we actually have everything here. The one other thing that needs to be done before we can finalize the wiring is to pull some dash pieces out. Dash is gonna generally be a custom setup on this, but it's gonna follow the stock packaging layout and style very closely. So for packaging, I'll bring the dash down and figure out where we can stick the ECU, where we're gonna end up with the fuse box. Fuse box may stay in the engine bay. I really should stick my whiteboard up so it'd be more aesthetically pleasing for you guys to see what I'm writing versus a notebook. But I am actually writing. Outside of that, let's do some checks on what else needs to be done before we fire it up. We have our fuel system complete. That just needs to be wired in to this guy here. That's pretty simple. This is what you get for $15,000. We have our radiator set up already made and all sorted. We just need this bracket for the front drive to be made out of aluminum as opposed to plastic. We're after to get six quarts of Mobile One 5W30. And we need our O2 sensors put in and to finish well that custom three inch mandrel bent exhaust that we built earlier. Then once we get power to that harness, that guy's ready to kick off, dominoes. Then we get to blow the entire thing apart so we can finish the chassis and start putting it back together for the final time, dominoes. So there is what needs to happen before this 430 horsepower V8 comes to life. I'm excited to hear that. And also in that line of dominoes, I have a rebuild kit coming for this steering gear. So that will be another video coming up shortly. We're gonna make this at least move around the shop much easier than it did before. But once we get this guy fired up, it all gets blown apart and then it's final assembly time and it is really on the downhill side of the battle from there on out. Appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you subscribing, and we will catch you on the next one. Hint, hint.